In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to lay out a simple web page. Using the HTML code that we developed in the previous video, I'll demonstrate how to use CSS to style the page and control the layout. It's not my intent to teach the basics of CSS in this video. I have another video series that covers CSS. But what I want to do is to demonstrate using CSS to lay out a web page so that you can see how HTML and CSS work together. This web page will be the final result at the end of this video. In the previous video, we built the structure of our web page using elements that are new to HTML5. And these new elements work well in newer versions of the popular browsers. But we want our web page to work in some of the older browsers as well. But since we used new HTML5 elements that didn't exist when the older browsers were made, the older browsers may display them differently than the newer browsers. By default, these elements are intended to be formatted so that they begin on a new line, but older browsers may not do that. However, this problem can be fixed by using a CSS style rule, which I'll show you how to do. For Internet Explorer versions 8 and older, a little extra work is required, but I'll demonstrate that as well. There are multiple ways that you can add CSS styles, and for this video, I'm going to be using an external style sheet. This is a common method for adding CSS. So create a new file. On the first line of the file, I'm going to include the character encoding for the file. Now add this style rule for the new HTML5 elements. The line starts with a comma separated list of elements that the style will be applied to. These are the new HTML5 elements that we're using. Then the style declaration is enclosed in curly brackets. This is the name of the property that we're specifying. The property is followed by a colon, which is then followed by the value that we want to set it to. So this CSS style sets the display property to block for these elements. Now I'll save the file and give it a name. I'm going to name it style.css. It's customary to use a CSS extension. I'm going to save it in the same directory that my HTML file is located in. Now we need to link this CSS style sheet to the HTML file. So I'll switch back to the HTML file. In the head section, add a link element. The rel attribute specifies the relationship between this file and the file that we are linking to. Set this value to style sheet. Set the type attribute to text forward slash CSS. The href attribute specifies the location and name of the CSS file. Since my CSS file is located in the same directory as my HTML file, all I need to do is to specify the file name. If the CSS file were located in a different directory, then I would also need to include the path to the file. So what we have done so far is to create a style sheet and then we put a link to it in our HTML file. The only style that we have defined so far is the display property for some new HTML5 elements. This style will allow these elements to begin on a new line in many of the older browsers as they were intended to do by default. However, this will not work for Internet Explorer version 8 and older. That's because these older versions of Internet Explorer don't allow CSS styles to be applied to elements that the browser doesn't recognize. However, there is a solution to this problem that involves adding some JavaScript code. This is easy to do, but for it to work, the user will need to have JavaScript enabled in their browser. So in the head section of the HTML file, add a script element. This is where the JavaScript code will be located. Then add a document create element function for one of the new HTML5 elements. In this case, the new element is the article element. Now repeat this for all of the new HTML5 elements that you want to apply styles to. Now since we only need this JavaScript code for older versions of Internet Explorer, we can enclose all of this in an Internet Explorer conditional comment. This specifies that we want the contents of this conditional comment to only be used for Internet Explorer versions less than Internet Explorer version 9. For non-Internet Explorer browsers, this JavaScript code will not be run because this whole section will be treated as an ordinary comment. With this JavaScript code, we will now be able to apply CSS styles to these elements in older versions of Internet Explorer.
Remember that for this JavaScript to work, however, the user must have JavaScript enabled in their browser. I've tried this JavaScript code with Internet Explorer versions 6, 7, and 8, and it worked well for me. Working with older versions than that is not something that I'm interested in doing. Now let's start laying out the web page. The HTML code that we wrote in the previous video is for a news web page. Here is the header. This is the navigation section. The main content starts here. We have a section for local news which contains two news stories. We have another section for national news which also contains two news stories. The main content ends here. We'll be putting the aside element in a sidebar and this is the footer. This is the layout that we're going to be making. The header will be at the top followed by the navigation section. The main content will be here and it will have two sections. The sidebar will be here and the footer here. This is what it currently looks like in the browser. We're going to start by setting the padding and margin values to zero for the elements that we'll be using. By setting these ourselves, we don't have to rely on different browsers using different default values. You may even want to add more elements to the list and use it as a template for future projects. This is what we have now. Next, I'm going to set the background color for the header section using a CSS style rule. But first, I'll add a class name to this header element. Since I have multiple header elements, I'm adding a class name so that I can apply a style to this header element without affecting the other header elements. Here's the CSS style rule for setting the background color of the header. Since we're using a class name here, it's preceded by a period. Here's what it looks like in the browser. Now let's change the color of the heading text. I'll do this by adding a color property and setting it to white. Now when I refresh the browser, the heading text color is white. Now let's add some padding to the header so that the text will not be too close to the edges. We'll use 10 pixels on the top and bottom and 20 pixels on the left and right. Here's what it looks like. Next, let's set the width for the web page. I'll do this by adding a style rule for the body element. This will set the width to 960 pixels. Now the web page is 960 pixels wide, but you'll notice that it's not centered in the browser. To center it, I can add a margin left and a margin right property and then set them both to auto. Now the web page is centered. Now let's set the background color of the web page to a light gray color. Let's also set the font family and font size properties. Here's what it looks like. Now let's set up the navigation section. Here's the HTML code. We have a nav element with an unordered list element and three list item elements with links. Let's start by setting some properties for the nav element. This will set the background color. Let's take a look. It's hard to see the link text now, so let's change the text color to white. If we look at the HTML code, you can see that the A elements are contained inside the list item elements. So we'll use a CSS style rule that looks like this. This style will only be applied to A elements if they are contained within a list item element. In the browser, it looks like this. Now let's add some padding to the nav element to prevent the text from coming too close to the edges. You can see that it added a little spacing. Now we're going to add a one pixel margin to the top of the nav element to create a small space between the header and the nav elements. I think it makes this look a little nicer. Now let's apply some styles to these list item elements. We'll start by setting the display property to inline. Now when I refresh the browser, these links will line up on a single line. Next, I'll set the left and right margins and change some of the font properties. This is what we have now. The main content of our web page has two section elements, here and here. We can set the background color for both of them like this. Now let's add a 10 pixel margin to the top to create space between these sections. Now the sections look separate. 
We have article elements inside the section elements. Let's set the background color for them like this. Now let's add a 5 pixel margin to the top to create space between the article elements. Now the article elements look separate. Now let's add padding to the section elements to prevent the article elements from coming too close to the edges. Now we have space around the article elements. Next, let's add padding to the article elements to prevent the text from coming too close to the edges. Now we have more space around the text. The main content of our web page is contained in the main element. So let's set the width of this to 640 pixels. This is what it looks like. After the end of the main element, we have an aside element. Let's set the background color of this, and let's also set the width. This is what it looks like. The aside element is going to be our sidebar, so let's position it to the right. We can do this by adding a float property. The aside element has moved to the right, and so now we need to move it up to the top. This whole area is contained in a main element. If we add a float property to the main element and float it to the left, then the aside element will move to the top. So let's add the float property. Now the aside element has moved to the top, but you'll notice that our footer has also moved to the top. In order to move the footer element down to the bottom, we can add a clear property to it. This is where the footer element is located in the HTML code. This is how we add the clear property. Now the footer element is at the bottom. Now let's finish with the aside element. We'll add padding so the text is not too close to the edges. And we'll also add a margin to the top to create space between the aside element and the navigation section above it. Next, let's add a background color to the footer. We'll also set the color of the text to white and add padding to separate the text from the edges. This is what it looks like. As a final step, let's add a margin to the bottom of the main element to separate it from the footer. This is our completed web page. As I mentioned earlier, it was not my intent to teach the basics of CSS in this video. If you're interested in learning more about CSS, then you may want to watch my CSS video series. Well, that concludes this video. You can find the code used in this video at littlewebhut.com. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.